Hello everybody, thank you for joining us today for this webcast de dedicated to advanced packaging industry. You are part of almost 500 people worldwide who have registered to view this webcast powered by your development. My name is Faisal El Kamasi and I am a global sales support and coordinator for your development. Before we get started with the webcast, Please, I would like to give you some information regarding the logistics. You have the possibility during all the webcasts to submit questions. In order to do so, you simply have to use the box at the bottom of the screen where you can read Ask a Question. We will answer as many questions today as time permits, and for the remaining question, we'll make a follow-up via mails within a week. We'll do our best to do that. Concerning the material and content, please note that the presentation is available and that you can you have the possibility to download it in the material section. You will also receive an email later after the webcast with a link to the recorded session. Today, YOL and System Plus Development uh, will share their analysis for you to discover the status of the advanced packaging industry. First, Let's start with an overview of the field of advanced packaging and the latest market and technology development presented by Andrei Ivankovic, market and technology analyst at your development. Andrei, please. Thank you very much, Faisal. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to everyone. Thanks again for joining us. So advanced packaging is an exciting field. There's a lot to say, so I'll just cut to the chase and get down to business. So. Uh, what we have first, uh, just to show you, is the outline. So I'll go over first uh, um, about the dynamics of the events packaging field, a bit about the technology, supply chain, forecast, and conclusions. Uh, obviously, only the most important things will be mentioned, and for the rest, there is the full status of events packaging report. So starting with the market dynamics. Very briefly, what situation are we in today? This is in the conductor industry, so what happens? There is a market happening, there is a technology happening. So the market happening is a slowdown of the mobile sector as the leading semiconductor driver. Um, 2014 and 15 were a bit rough for the semiconductor industry. We see a bit of a recovery in 2016 and uh, hopefully uh, more uh, CAGRs in the future. Uh, however, it's been a bit rough last two, three years. From a technology perspective, we also reached uh, the phase where Scaling is not really cost beneficial anymore. Of course, it does um, provide us more performance, but it's just uh, becoming more and more expensive to go down to um, lower technology nodes, so 10 nanometer, 7 nanometer, um, and beyond. Uh, what can we do with respect to that, or what, what is being done already in the semiconductor industry? So there is a summary of three market uh, moves, and, and, and two are, are a bit more uh, technology moves. So from the market perspective, obviously, we see a lot of consolidation going on. There has been $225 billion of M&A in the last two years. That's a huge number. Um, uh, so consolidation is number one. Number two, um, trying to find or even create new applications. So we'll talk a bit about that um, very soon. Third is to focus on the emerging markets. So we all know that China is, is an area of high interest for everyone, but there's also other, other areas uh, around the world. Um, technology moves, so something that we'll focus on more today. Uh, first, we can just continue scaling, right? So more and more. Um, there are still customers, there are still applications for, for the scaling, although it's more expensive. Uh, apart from that, we can consider alternative technologies, so the more than more or the beyond more, as people call it. We can focus on the front end. We can think of different approach to our current planar transistors, so for example, SOI. Um, there is more application-specific devices that we can produce, that's MEM, CIS. Power, in this case, is more related to electrification of vehicles, for example, LED to, uh, to displays, whether it's OLED or different flexible displays. So there are certain variations. And then finally, the one we're interested in today, advanced packaging. So we see advanced packaging as um, a certain uh, feature of the semiconductor industry that can actually increase the value and provide both lower cost, so sort of artificially continue the um, cost curve, cost benefit curve, increase the performance and functionality. 
So about the applications, we are currently transitioning in the semiconductor industry from the mobile area uh, led by the smartphones uh, to an area to era of diversification. So what does that mean? That means in the future, in the next years to come, we don't expect one particular leading uh, market driver as we had before in the decades before, but several applications that will continue to grow in the semiconductor industry. So there is the really famous Internet of Things, the autonomous driving, uh, vehicle electrification, augmented and virtual reality, artificial intelligence, and in general, if you think about what will power all of these uh, um, features, so the IoT infrastructure, so we also need uh, a new type of connectivity, faster data rates in 5G, and of course the, the processing power, so more service and more data centers. If we focus a bit more on technology, uh, there is one important key message that we can take away after um, uh, the, the uh, general market trend that we mentioned. So we're transitioning from more to more than more and beyond more. But in a technology perspective, that means that we are now developing two different roadmaps. So we have the scaling roadmap and we have the functional roadmap. That's true from the front end of line, but it's also true for especially packaging. So before we continue, I would just like to give you an overview of what we consider are the advanced packaging platforms. So these are obviously uh, packages without IC substrates, so wafer flow packages, whether fan in or fan out. And there is various IC substrate based packages. So these can be flip chip VGA, can be 3D IC, um, so silicon or glass interposer based, various system and packages based on these configurations. Then we have embedded dye in substrate, so either in uh, the package substrate or in the PCB. And we also put here a particular lead frame package, QFN, which is not necessarily advanced packaging. However, we see some competition with this, uh, uh, with this type of package and in general the advanced lead frame packages. So we put it here also in this, uh, in this overview so that we have it in mind. Uh, briefly throughout the years, what we've seen in, in packaging from, from the uh, 50s or 60s today to the 2010s, and, and, and so before the package was a shell, right? It was a way to connect uh, our semiconductor device. It was a way to protect mechanically or chemically. And throughout the years, it developed into a really complex system. So that means it's not just to support to the IC. It actually has to enhance the performance of the IC. So they have reached the point where we're doing more and more multi-die packaging, some of it which we call system in packages. So of course there's a discussion what is a system, what is not a system. The point is there is more multi-die packages and in the future we expect uh, this to be the key trend in advanced packaging and perhaps beyond. So more system in packages and that also um, brings more customization when you have multiple dies and uh, many ways of, of connecting these dies whether it's the high end, mid end, or low end, that means there will be a higher degree of customization than we have today. Uh, Roman from System Plus will, will uh, give a nice presentation after me uh, with the teardowns and the reverse costing, so I won't focus too much on this. Uh, the idea was just to show that the system and packages, which are in advanced packaging today, are not necessarily for what advanced packaging is traditionally thought of, so the high end or the mid end. We see the advanced packaging today going also to consumer and to lower cost packages. So recently we've seen the NXP multi-die package, so this is a fan out. Uh, it has four RDA layers, so just for reference, the THNC Info has three. So it's quite an advanced package, but aimed for the lower cost uh, consumer market. Uh, the Intel IoT SIP named the Curry, so it has more than 10 dies inside. Again, it's meant for low cost, low power, not something that Intel usually does. The third package here is, is Fanout, which is aimed at radar, so there's Infinity and XP that produced this. Obviously, it's not a system in package, it's not a multi die package at all, but the point here is to show that advanced packaging is also crossing to high frequency uh, domains. So a few key messages before we continue with the technology. So the main technology trends and future challenges in advanced packaging. First, obviously surviving the change of the semiconductor drivers. What does that mean for packaging houses? Well, basically, the options, as we see it in YOL, is either to be big enough to be able to offer the whole variety of interconnects and package architectures to the customer so they can choose, 
or to be very specialized in a particular technology and to be, let's say, the expert, the best in this sector or even a niche. This could be MEMS, LED, image sensors, and so on. Uh, probably if you're not in one of these two sectors within the next couple of years, the margins are likely to go down. It's going to be more tougher to compete in, in the packaging world. Um, as far as the supply chain goes, so um, we've seen foundries entering the advanced packaging market. Everybody knows about TSMC. Uh, TSMC is not just one of the top advanced packaging uh, houses. It's actually now already in the top 10 global packaging houses. Um, we see entrance of new, uh, of, of new and more packaging players. So there is the EMS that wants to do some more system and packages. There is the PCB subsystem manufacturers that want to do different kinds of embedded die architectures that compete. Uh, there is more involvement of OEMs in general, so some of them are already fabless. Uh, it's a way to better control the semiconductor supply chain. Uh, obviously, we expect more pressure from OEMs. Some of them that we are not necessarily used to directly in semiconductor industry, so nominally software companies like uh, Google, Facebook, Oracle, or Amazon are more and more involved with hardware. And last but not least, uh, the supply chain of an SAP type product is pretty complex, uh, from the design to the testing part. So there are cert still certain questions about the ownership uh, of, of such, a, such a product. As far as future competition goes, uh, there's some more text on this slide just for you to reference to it a bit later. Uh, so within advanced packaging, we see three competition areas that will intensify in coming years. So this is uh, board versus packaging, uh, board versus package software, I'm sorry, and there is package software versus fan out that splits into two areas. I'll uh, speak a bit more about this in, in two more slides. Uh, again, uh, in, within advanced packaging, there is the um, uh, fan out and two and a half D, 3D platforms that have the highest growing, uh, uh, highest growth rates of all the advanced packaging platforms. So what that will cause is um, more fan out penetration into the flip chip market. That's something we definitely expect in the future. And in terms of PCBs, uh, more subject like PCBs. A bit more about that in, in uh, one or two slides. As far as advanced packaging versus other platforms go, so we mentioned in a few slides back that we put GFN in the advanced packaging perspective, although it's not really an advanced package, because we see some advancements, some more R&D being done in lead frame type packages which could compete with advanced packages in the lower end. So if you think about not just the wire bonded QFN, but the flip shift QFN, so certain hybrid versions, if you think about the molded interconnect substrate, this all works for a low cost package and has uh, a quite substantial IO count capability. Obviously it's not for the high, high end, perhaps not for the mid end, but in the lower end, as we've seen, uh, there's some advanced packaging also competing in the lower end. Uh, they could be uh, the right competition. So a few slides about the technology. Um, unfortunately, we cannot afford to go very deep, but uh, there's a few general comments that we can make. So we mentioned uh, we expect more multi-die heterogeneous integration, whether it's just multi-die packaging or systems in package. Uh, that means that we have to cope increasingly with the customization from customer to customer. We do expect more fan out packages larger than 20 by 20 millimeters. And as just said before, in the functional roadmap, so we expect more competition uh, from mature type packaging. So, so where we don't need to scale necessarily down to 10 nanometer or beyond 10 nanometer node in the functional roadmap, uh, competition of mature versus advanced packaging. A bit more technical, uh, so if you go down the scaling uh, roadmap, which is happening obviously, uh, more scaling of vertical interconnects, so copper pillars going down to 40 microns pitch, solder balls, um, uh, so the final VGA balls going down to 0 0.3 millimeters um, and below. Uh, there will be some more innovation in TSVs, perhaps all of this is going to some kind of monolithic 3D IC packaging in the next 10 or 15 years. Uh, redistribution lines from the die to the board, um, so this is the competition between fan out, flip chip, and the PCB. I'll explain that in the next slide. Okay, so this is the uh, image of 2016. It's related to interconnects. On the y-axis, you have the layer thickness, so you can imagine this would be 
the thickness of the copper line plus the dielectric. And then the, on the x-axis, you have the line with space. So you see there's a distribution from 0 0.1 to somewhere like 30 by 30 microns or 100 by 100 microns. The point is to try to uh, place the interconnects that we are using, the resolution of the interconnects, from border level to wafer level. So if you consider the PCB is going down to resolution somewhere like 30 by 30 microns today, uh, semiconductor packaging is somewhere uh, around 30 by 30, let's say, down to at best 5 by 5, not really, mostly like 10 by 10 or 9 by 9 in the latest fan out. And then we have the wafer processing area. Obviously, we can go to nanometers uh, for the back end of, of the wafer. And there is a TSV section here that we can put uh, under semiconductor packaging that would fit in the wafer processing. So what's the point of this image? If we switch to 2020, so a few years ahead, what we see is that the bubbles are going further down. And this creates three competitions that were mentioned before. So if you look at competition number one, the boards, the need, uh, there's a need for boards to scale down below 30 by 30, but that already enters into a competition with substrates. So there's different type of processing for boards and different type of processing for substrates. So the result of this would be substrates like PCBs. There's a full analysis that we did on this in the advanced substance report. Uh, number two and number three are uh, related to more flip chip versus fan out type uh, packaging. So number two is uh, let's say the, the traditional flip chip versus fan out going below 10 micron line with spaces. Uh, and the result of this is that fan out is taking over the flip chip market uh, slowly and we expect more penetration. Obviously, flip chip is a huge market and it will not disappear anytime soon, but we do expect more penetration, especially in the higher resolution areas as fan out is developing faster. And then there's a third competition zone, which is fan out versus um, well, basically 3D, so fan out as an option to lower the cost of TSV packaging. I'll go, um, now is the time for the uh, supply chain. So we mentioned the scaling and the functional roadmap. Uh, this brings us to the question, fine, we have these two roadmaps, but which customer will actually need to scale down below 10. So we know there's only three or perhaps four foundries that plan to go below 10 nanometer technology node. But then the question is for which customers, right? Who will be able to still make designs and final products and who needs to want to do that below 10 nanometer technology node? So there is a group of companies uh, that, that are well known. that are mostly focused on the high end, whether it's in mobile or in computing. So this would be the left bubble right here. And then there is the rest of the semiconductor industry, or I would say the majority of the semiconductor industry, which are still evaluating how useful it is to go below, uh, below 20 nanometer node even. So some of them will continue following the scaling roadmap, but some of them will stay and try to enhance the value of their product, and in that sense, the package through different uh, functionalities. If we look at the, uh, the packaging companies, uh, so this, these bubbles are distributed by packaging platforms. So you see fan in, fan out, uh, flip chip, two and a half 3D assembly, and then a separate bubble embedded dye and substrate. So obviously fan in and flip chip have been here for some time. There's a lot of packaging houses in these two bubbles or in, in both bubbles. And then you see a bit of a hole in fan out. Um, there is several companies today involved in fan out, both R&D, and some of them are in, in high volume manufacturing, but there's still a lot of space to cover the fan out area. Uh, Twin AMD 3D, there's a lot of R&D that has been going on in the last years. Now we see AMD, NVIDIA uh, pushing the manufacturing chains for new products. So there's quite some capability in the industry for uh, assembling uh, TSV type packaging. Embedded dye and substrate is kind of uh, a bit off the grid. It's still a small market. But there is a high promise, especially as semiconductors are turning towards semiconductorizing the car. Apart from that, also medical applications for embedded dye. So a bit more of a financial uh, viewpoint on this uh, advanced packaging industry. So what you see here is three different columns from 2016 to 2022. So the orange one is the total OSET packaging. The blue one is the IDM packaging portion. And then separate from that, the yellow is the advanced packaging. So what we see here 
is that the OSEP packaging is growing faster than IBM packaging. So that means that we see more outsourcing. Uh, to give you a few numbers, so um, we have passed in 2015 uh, the 50% mark, and we expect in, by 2022 that we have 50%, 54% um, of, uh, of packaging revenue being outsourced. So outsourcing will continue. If you look at advanced packaging, uh, it is about 38% uh, today of the total packaging, and it will continue to somewhere above 40, probably 41% by 2022. So the point here is that advanced packaging is growing faster than the total packaging market. If you look at top 25 OSATs, um, there is several types of analysis we can, we can make based on their financial performance. But as a takeaway from this webcast, what we see at Yol is that there is a specific group of companies, to be precise, eight packaging houses that we see are, uh, have continuous investment, uh, both in CAPEX and R&D, and are really pushing for advanced packaging. And these are basically the, the, the top or more or less the top eight houses. And then there, is, there are the rest which are either stagnating or still focusing on their own market. So I said uh, eight, there is actually nine if you see where the, uh, the um, dashed line is. Uh, so this is eight because there is another one still in the top, uh, top 10, this is UTAC, but we know that they have certain problems uh, uh, currently uh, they're facing, so we'll see how that plays out. Uh, they have not been able to invest uh, as much as before, so we still have the other eight, which would be the top five, AC, Amcor, uh, JSEC Group Now, Spill Power Tech. And then the interesting part, there is a lot of investment from Chinese OSATs, so obviously, obviously Tianshui, Huatian, and Nantong Fujitsu, or Tongfu Microelectronics today. Uh, they, have, they have come to number six and number seven, whereas in the last years they were way above ten. Uh, and last but not least, King Yuan Electronics, which is not necessarily in advanced packaging, but they still exhibit a very high uh, CAPEX investment. So speaking of capital expenditures, this is uh, um, an overview of the top 25 companies. So you can see that the top eight uh, companies, so UTEC is now outside of this dash line, the top eight are heavily investing, and you see either uh, a continuous investment or you see an increase of investment. And this is a good overview because you can see just by how uh, the Chinese OSATs, like, like the Chase group or the Nantuk Fujitsu or Tian Chui Huatian, how much they have changed in the last years and how much more they're investing. If you look at the Chase group, they went from 200 million to 700 million in two or three years of CAPEX. So last but not least, the uh, market forecast. So here we will look a bit into the particular advanced packaging platforms. Uh, before that, uh, um, a general message on the growth rates. So the projections or most of the projections out there uh, for the global GDP are somewhere between 2.5 and 3% in the next several years. Uh, the semiconductor industry, although it was stagnating in 2014 and 15, it had about 2% uh, in 2016. It is expected to recover with the applications that we did uh, mention in the very beginning of the presentation. Another interesting part, how packaging relates to that. So if so the semiconductor, the total semiconductor industry is expected to grow 4 to 5 percent, the total packaging, semiconductor packaging industry is somewhere between 3 to 4. However, from these 3 to 4 percent, uh, what we can see after a deeper dive is that advanced packaging is growing 6 to 7 percent and the other wire bond slash lead frame type packaging uh, is, is much lower, so 1 to 2%. So the point of this is to, again, show that advanced packaging has the highest growth um, and is outperforming in general even the optimistic growth of the um, semiconductor industry. So um, a bit of a quantification uh, on that. Uh, so what you see here is, is 2014, 16, 2022 in the columns, and you have three parameters, the revenue, the wafer, and the unit split uh, in the rows. Uh, so in 2014, advanced packaging was uh, around $20 billion, so 38%. Today it grew to 41%, so $22.5 billion, and we expect it to nearly reach 50% by 2022. So 50% of the total packaging market. 
Um, in terms of wafers, uh, and, and even more in terms of units, it's a bit, uh, it's a bit lower. Um, so obviously there's a huge number of units out there, uh, very small in, in lead frame type packaging. So you know, we don't see such an increase of number of units of advanced packages uh, or, or that much uh, in terms of the total number of wafers. But the revenue is very indicative. So here's the advanced packaging revenue forecast. So from 2016 to 2022, um, so what we see is the fan in platform, the fan out platform, uh, the flip chip platform, and embedded dive, which is basically very small. It's on, it's on top of the graph in, in, in green. Um, why do we have this, this curve here? So this is uh, the isolated, it's isolated from the flip chip. It's 2.5D, 3D. Uh, so just to give you an idea of how much revenue 2.5D, 3D is from, from flip chip. Uh, so obviously it does not go down after 2022. It's not the end of the platform. So we have to correct that part here. Um, the main messages are, are fan out uh, and 2.5D, 3D are the highest uh, growth platforms. So fan out has 36% CAGR, uh, 2.5D, 3D, 23% uh, CAGR. Uh, fan out is, is mostly linked to mobile. We'll see the jump uh, in application processors. Um, obviously, we heard that FedEx wants to um, try to attack also more the computing market. We've seen some examples, uh, and we'll see more in the webcast about um, FedEx trying to go in consumer as well, perhaps even in automotive. Uh, but for the time being, it's still mobile. To an FD 3D, obviously, um, computing with more AMD, NVIDIA, uh, um, for now, AMD and NVIDIA um, final products. Uh, to be completely honest, the embedded die platform has nominally a higher growth rate than, than 2.5D 3D, so 24%, um, and that's, that's very encouraging. However, the embedded die market is currently still very small. It's tens of millions of dollars, so obviously uh, when the market is, is small and there is some um, movements, the growth rates will be, will be quite large. But there is, um, there is an, uh, a high optimism for embedded eye, especially with the automotive market growing, and finally some medical products coming out, which took uh, quite some years to pass uh, all of the regulations. Um, look at the unit forecast. Um, what we added here is also the QFN in number of units. So what you see is, is a little bit of a different picture. Um, while Flipchip was before the highest, uh, uh, the platform with uh, the highest revenue, not the growth, but the total revenue, here when you look at the units, uh, there is a huge amount of fan in units and a huge amount of QFN units, which are overshadowing uh, even the Flipchip and especially the, um, the fan out in 2.5D, 3D units. So we do still expect the highest growth coming from the fan out in terms of units. Um, uh, 2.5D, 3D is a bit smaller now because we're looking at very large packages usually and embedded die is hanging in with 21% uh, of uh, uh, CAGR. Okay, and uh, finally reaching the conclusions here. Uh, so just the main points, so the semiconductor market is turning from mobile to more scattered uh, applications driving the semiconductor industry. Advanced packaging stands today about $22.5 uh, billion. So it's, it's going from 41% uh, 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 to hopefully 49, so close to 50% in the next years. Uh, advanced packaging is growing faster than the semiconductor industry, so about 6.5% compared to 4-5% uh, um, to to, uh, of the total semiconductor industry. Very important, there's two roadmaps, and in that sense, two advanced packaging roadmaps we're seeing, the scaling and the functional roadmap. But both roadmaps hold more heterogeneous integrations and more multi-die packaging. Fan out and 2.5D, 3D have the highest growth rates that we, that we mentioned just now before. There's other competitions that we see with advanced packaging in the lower end, so various advanced QFN and potentially also the molded interconnect substrate. Um, from uh, a supply chain point of view, so outsourcing continues, it has passed 50% and it's about to reach 54% according to our estimates by 2022. Uh, new players coming into the market, so uh, foundries and EMS. Um, what we did 
comment too much, uh, but about the, the players that have been uh, still in the industry with us in the last year. So Intel remains the biggest packaging house. They have a huge amount of copper filler capacity. TCMC now is in the top 10, so it's not really a boundary anymore. Biggest jump from China-based OSAP, so we've seen that uh, uh, Jason has uh, considerably increased investment, and now we have Tianshui, Huatian, uh, and Dong Fomite Electronics in, in, the top, uh, in the top 10. And last but not least, if uh, the packaging world uh, wants to survive, if the packaging houses want to survive, basically they have to invest more into advanced packaging or be a very specialized, uh, very specialized in certain technologies. Thank you very much for your attention, and Faisal, I'll give it back to you and to Roman for some theory. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Andre, for this uh, <clears throat> very interesting presentation. Uh, just uh, let me remind you that once again, you, you, you can ask the question. Don't hesitate to ask it using the uh, Q&A button. Uh, we will do answer it at the end of the webcast. So we will continue uh, and end with a presentation from uh, Roman Fro. So he's the CTO for System Plus Consulting uh, with a presentation on technology and cost review for advanced packaging. So please, Romain. Thank you very much, Fesla. Thank you very much. And thank you, Andre, also for the very interesting talk. Um, so right now I will uh, uh, show you some example of uh, advanced packaging platform we observe at, uh, at System Plus Consulting. Yeah. Uh, so I propose to uh, divide the talk with uh, two interesting platforms. In fact, we uh, we, uh, we we show in uh, the past few months. Uh, the first one linked to uh, application processors packaging, and the other one with system uh, in packaging. So let's start with uh, the application uh, processors. So uh, I'm sure you're well aware that uh, right now application processors for smartphones are mainly uh, uh, packaged with uh, some package and package uh, uh, platform. Right now, there is a mainly a, a battle uh, uh, between three uh, three main platforms. Uh, some of them are used uh, by Samsung, for example, uh, using uh, the well-known uh, TMV uh, technology, using uh, a flip chip interconnection of a die on, on a substrate. Uh, the other one, uh, mainly used by Qualcomm, uh, or a lot of smartphones also, uh, use a process uh, made by uh, Shinko in, in Japan, using uh, uh, embedded die package and package technology, and the last one, which appeared on the market last year, uh, inside some uh, Apple iPhones, uh, uses the TSMC package uh, using a turnout uh, platform, uh, which is still a 3D package and package approach. Uh, so in order to highlight the main differences, in fact, I propose to show you some uh, cross-section, in fact, uh, of um, three platforms. Uh, so the first one here, uh, the TMV, so mainly developed by Amcor, in fact, uh, has been um, introduced on the market uh, since many time right now. Uh, it is used by a lot of players, uh, as I told you, like uh, Samsung, also Mediatek uses this platform for uh, the application processors packaging. As we can observe, in fact, the die is directly uh, uh, in uh, the processor die is in flip chip uh, on top of a uh, core substrate. So here it's a four-layer code substrate, and the connection between the processors and the memory package on top of it is realized with a solder that they call a through-mold via solder connection. So uh, in terms of, uh, of thickness, uh, the application processor um, package size here is close to 0.55 millimeter. So if we compare it now to uh, another platform used by uh, Qualcomm for the latest uh, Snapdragon processor, it's a platform which has been developed by Shinko, so it's called uh, the Molded Core Embedded Package, MTEP. As we can observe here, the processor die is also connected in flip chip to a substrate, but in this case here, the substrate is a, a coreless substrate, a three-layer coreless substrate, and the die is connected with, uh, with copper pillar and protected with uh, an underfill. Uh, the main differences here come from the fact that the processor die is uh, embedded, in fact, in terms of um, uh, it's embedded inside uh, a molding and between two um, uh, two substrates. And in order to make the connection, some copper core solder balls are used in order to realize a very good uh, connection of, uh, of both substrates. At the end, in terms of thickness, uh, we can observe that this, uh, the thickness of the application processor package is uh, thinner compared to the previous one with 
uh, 0.4 millimeter thickness in terms of packaging thickness. And the latest uh, uh, solution, which has been introduced by TSMC on the market last year for the application processor of, uh, of the iPhone 7, is um, the Info, the integrated uh, fan out uh, technology. And uh, as you can see here on the cross section, we can observe that it's in this case. Uh, the substrate of the package has been completely removed. Now all of the steps are realized at the wafer level. So it used a, a fan out wafer level platform made on 300 millimeter wafers using three RDL uh, layers. And uh, as you can observe on the cross section, you have a, a final thickness of the package, which is uh, just 0.23 millimeter. So on top of it, uh, you have still the package, uh, the memory package, which is directly connected and soldered to the processor package through the copper connection, so the CIV, the copper, uh, through NVR connection in copper, inside the package molding. So in terms of um, of, uh, of structures, uh, for sure, it, uh, it brings some very new field on this packaging uh, market for the POP of uh, application processor packaging. Uh, in terms of uh, thickness, it reduces of more than 30% the package thickness. Uh, for sure, in terms of packaging, you have less steps linked to the flip chips uh, steps, and also the laminate at the end is removed, uh, and RDL are made directly at uh, at the wafer level. Um, so this uh, new type of, uh, of package and package developed at the wafer level offer a lot of possibilities, in fact, for, for the next uh, solutions. We will see if this solution will be adopted by more players. What we can observe now, if we are looking to the uh, cost of uh, this platform, is that it's uh, uh, still new, so a lot of investment has been made by TSMC. But if we have a look on, on the cost, linked to uh, what could be a, a mature cost for this kind of product, we can observe that uh, even if it uh, shared some, uh, um, some number of RDL, so three in this case, uh, and by taking into, uh, into account a yield which is not mature less, we assume, but uh, it should be uh, not so bad uh, at this time, we obtain a, a manufacturing cost of uh, of $500 per 300 millimeter wafer linked to uh, the application processor, only the application processor, including uh, so the copper pillar on the die, uh, the pick and place of uh, application processors on carrier wafer, and uh, all of the RDL manufacturing, the solder bore approach, and uh, the cost linked to, uh, to the yield losses. So in terms of, uh, of cost, it's uh, quite competitive, in fact, compared to other solutions. So uh, we'll see if, uh, if uh, more product will appear on the So it brings me to the next uh, uh, part of my, my talk, a link to the system in packages. And uh, for the first example, in fact, I would like to, uh, to show you uh, uh, a, a very interesting system in package, in fact, which has been released on the market by NXP uh, some months ago. So this product has been uh, made uh, by uh, NEPES, uh, and uh, it offers a very interesting uh, part because uh, you have uh, a package of an application processor, uh, a flash memory, and also uh, a power management IC, a PMIC, which are all packaged at the wafer level. So it's a, it's a complete fan out wafer level system package, which has been developed by NEPES and uh, put on the market by, uh, by NXP. So this solution in terms of uh, size reduction compared to uh, uh, existing solution using uh, package uh, ICs uh, bring uh, more than 60% food reduction uh, at the end. So if we have a, a deeper look of, uh, at this solution, we can observe here uh, that uh, uh, the three dies are placed uh, directly on, uh, on, on RDLs and uh, uh, it uses a complete uh, system package approach for mixing dies, passive components, and in order to uh, also allow a connection with uh, a memory, so a package and package approach, uh, they, they manage to realize a via frame on top of uh, the application processor in order to realize the connection to uh, the molding compound. So looking at the cross section here, you can have a look on uh, the kind of, uh, of packaging which is realized for this, uh, for this component. So it's a chips off and out uh, process uh, using four redistribution layers. And as I told you, uh, the, the via frame uh, to package via is formed uh, uh, with a PCB panel and then uh, directly put it at the wafer level in order to uh, bring a connection with uh, a memory package on top of the application processor. Uh, 
other SIPs which are on the market since uh, uh, some years right now are uh, RF module SIPs. Uh, this kind of, uh, of systemic package are used by a lot of players right now like uh, Apple and Samsung. Uh, so it's really interesting in fact to compare uh, solutions of, uh, of players like a Chinese player, like Huawei, for example, compared to, uh, to Apple. If we have a look on uh, the LTE area on uh, the electronic PC board, we can observe that uh, uh, the RS part linked to the front-end module represents a very big area for this kind of phone. So for the Huawei phone here, an example, you can have more than 500 square millimeters of uh, PCB area linked uh, to the front-end module, so uh, front-end module. If we compare to the solution made by Apple, you can observe by using less um, uh, standalone and uh, discrete array filters uh, and by using more system in packages, you can decrease with a very good ratio, in fact, uh, the final size on your, your, your PCB board. If we have a look inside one of these SIP uh, for RF uh, module, you can observe that there is a lot of components. So uh, in this example of uh, a module come from uh, Broadcom, so formerly Avago, you can observe that more than uh, there is a 17, 17 dies, in fact, which are integrated inside this SIP. Uh, so there is 12 bow filters and a lot of uh, passive and power amplifier, which are integrated inside uh, of the module. So it's a really, um, interesting uh, uh, packaging because uh, it deals with a lot of uh, advanced So There is mainly two players, in fact, which are on this market of, uh, of uh, high-frequency band uh, RF module. Uh, it's a Broadcom and Corvo, and you have here two examples of, uh, of the technology they are using in terms of, of structures of the SIP uh, using the connection of, uh, of the die to the substrate. So both of them are using uh, a coreless substrate uh, with seven layers, in fact, here, in order to realize the interconnection of the dyes. And as you can observe on the first cross section, Corvo is using a bow filter with copper pillars to connect to it, and uh, Broadcom is using a solder, bow, a solder bow flip chip approach in order to uh, connect the bow filters on the substrate. In terms of cost, now, uh, even if uh, these components are quite complicated to, uh, to produce, uh, in terms of packaging, uh, it brings very interesting uh, aspect because uh, at the end, uh, the assembly process at the board level is uh, much more simple. And in terms of manufacturing costs, it uh, deals with some uh, uh, some dollars. So we assume that uh, a standard front-end module could be assumed to be in the range of uh, one dollar, uh, with a big share linked to the bow filters itself, with 25%, uh, uh, power amplifier also, and uh, finally the packaging mixed uh, PCB coreless represent a big part uh, with close to 40% of uh, the cost of this kind. Another example of uh, RF module which are used using uh, an SIP platform is uh, made for the Wi-Fi modules. Uh, again, uh, there is two, uh, two different solutions on the market. There are players uh, using still uh, some uh, uh, flip chip or Wi-Fi level package IC which are directly put on the board and passive component filters directly at the board level, and players, again, like Apple or Samsung, are using now Wi-Fi module, uh, which are system package module, mixing uh, 15 dice plus passive components. So all of these packaging are made by players like uh, ASE and uh, USI, in this case, for, 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 the, for the Apple module. Another interesting platform uh, for SIP is uh, the wearable, wearable or IoT, in fact. Um, what we can observe on the market since uh, uh, some months right now is there is, there is a more and more components which are using uh, uh, system in package in order to uh, bring more functionality to uh, the component. Uh, a good example of this is uh, the component which has been released by Intel uh, last year, the Intel Curie uh, SIP. Uh, so inside this component of only uh, 88 square millimeter, uh, you can uh, have more than 11 uh, ICs plus passive components. Uh, it's big ICs, uh, so it's a, a 32 byte uh, system and chip made by Intel, in fact, which is directly uh, put at the bottom of the package. And uh, you have uh, sensors integrated inside the SIP, like 6 axis IMU made by Bosch. Uh, you have a Bluetooth chip made by Nordic Semiconductors. And also, you have MEMS oscillator uh, and a lot of uh, uh, functionalities inside a very small uh, uh, package at the end. 
if you have a look uh, at the technology of, uh, of the Intel Curie, uh, we have a cross section here uh, showing the structure. Uh, so in terms of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of technology, it's very interesting because it makes a lot of, uh, of packaging uh, uh, process with a, a flip chip connection of, uh, of dyes, uh, with all level uh, packaging of uh, some IC. You have also directly some uh, LGA package which are put it inside uh, the same package. Uh, directly on top of a 10 layer PCB substrate. And as you can see at the bottom of the package, there is a microcontroller also, which is flip chipped on directly at the bottom uh, using a, a cavity uh, inside uh, the substrate. Uh, at the cost level, if we have a look on uh, this module, uh, it makes a lot of product, but at the end, the cost linked to the function is quite low, in fact. Uh, and we, we calculated that. Uh, uh, the part linked uh, to the packaging is relatively low. It's less than 20 percent, which also have a very interesting uh, term of, uh, uh, of final approach for this kind of, uh, of module. Uh, as Andre said, also in the talk, there is another platform, which is uh, uh, the embedded die, which is uh, on the market since uh, some time. Uh, right now, there are many two players, uh, TDK and ITNS. And uh, this platform is also interesting in terms of integration because uh, you can uh, have access to uh, the internal layers of your PCB uh, substrate in order to put inside your active or, or passive components. Uh, so this uh, Bluetooth module, in fact, released by TDK, uh, which was the smallest Bluetooth module uh, on the market with only 25 by 25 millimeter, uh, mixed an IC um, embedded into a four-layer PCB substrate. And on top of the substrate, uh, passives and quartz uh, crystal components uh, could be directly placed in order to save some space, uh, again, at the board level. Finally, uh, the component is mold in order to provide uh, a standard BGA package, which would be easily uh, placed on top of any electronic board. Uh, also, Silicon Lab released uh, another smallest uh, Bluetooth uh, module uh, this year, uh, but this one is uh, with a building uh, integrity chip uh, antenna. Uh, it's also very interesting in terms of, uh, of packaging approach because here it makes uh, some uh, wire bonding process of uh, a, a Bluetooth chip. It makes uh, uh, IPDs inside the module because we can observe that more and more IPDs, RF IPDs, uh, balloons are integrated inside this uh, system in packages. And as you can see on the picture here, in terms of package, it's quite interesting because you have very thin die, Bluetooth die, which is directly mounted on top of crystal components and then uh, connected with some uh, wire bonding. Really impressive in terms of, uh, of packaging. Uh, other players uh, try to uh, release uh, also a Bluetooth module, so still for the wearable IoT market. Uh, another player, which was uh, Simbly, uh, so a subdivisory of uh, Eptagon, now purchased by AMS. Um, uh, release the product, uh, which is also shared the same function. It's here a Bluetooth module with uh, a built-in chip antenna. And in terms of packaging, here we can observe that also uh, they managed to rely some uh, integrated shield inside uh, the molding compound. Uh, so a lot of patents are still uh, uh, deposited by players on this field of system package because uh, even if the platform could be uh, uh, well mature, a uh, lot of new uh, features are bring to the market. And this example is really interesting because with its shield, built in antenna, and the, the packaging at the system uh, in the system level, it's really, uh, really uh, interesting. Also, another application which uh, are using system in package more and more is uh, the power application. Uh, so here, I'll, in order to continue on uh, the system in package level, we can observe, in fact, that uh, uh, we can make mixed uh, power components, uh, power passives components, power uh, MOSFET components uh, inside a very small uh, package uh, molded at the end in order to uh, uh, bring some uh, very uh, high density of, uh, of current and uh, high density of connection. This is a good example made by uh, linear technology here, which is a 40 amp regulator uh, using power MOSFET uh, 0.18 micro uh, array uh, stack inductor directly uh, mounted on top of the molding, but uh, using some uh, uh, 3D connection inside uh, the package molding in order to connect uh, PCB substrate. So this kind of package uh, are very new, and we can uh, really think that it will appear more and more uh, 
future on, on, on the market. So to conclude with uh, uh, this, uh, this example, we can observe that uh, uh, two platforms, so the fanout welfare level package and the system package are more and more present on the market. Uh, so the fanout welfare level package uh, could lead to a lot of uh, cost reduction, uh, mainly for the 3D package and package configuration uh, by stacking at the welfare level the application processor and uh, the memory. And also a system in package, which is now a mature platform, uh, offer a lot of cost advantage linked to simplification of system bill of material. And uh, it is really well fit with uh, RF modules, wearable modules, uh, due to the strong possibilities of miniaturization. We observe also that power modules are following the same trend of size reduction, and uh, the SIPs are offering a very good thermal response and increased power density, which are really uh, good for this kind of module. Uh, so finally, SIP can offer uh, much more functional value and cost reduction, in fact, for the future semiconductor. Thank you very much for your attention. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Romain for this uh, relevant and interesting information. Uh, we are going now uh, to the wrap-up with the question session, question and answer. We will answer as many questions uh, today as time permits, and uh, we'll do our best to, um, for the remaining question. We will uh, answer by, by email. Okay, so let's see the question. Um, so I think uh, one, one question, Andre, there is one question for you. Uh, what is the, the future uh, of fanout? Uh, what is the future of fanout and uh, can it penetrate outside of the mobile segment and take over larger volumes from the flip chip platform? I guess it's a question for you, Andre. Yeah, uh, thank you, Michelle. So I'll try to link this question to some other ones that I've seen uh, most in the Q&A, uh, particularly from Amcor and Intel. Uh, so um, Let's start with the fanout application. So obviously, the, the, the what we've seen until now is in mobile, and then the next step, uh, we've seen some companies already trying to qualify large fanout packages in the computing and networking sector. So these are packages above 20 by 20 millimeters. Uh, so that would be the second application. Um, and the third one is in general RF. So let's say the success rate is not so high yet, but the demand for millimeter wave is not so high yet. So that's understandable. Uh, for the computing and networking area related to fanout, so um, we do think that fanout has potential there. Obviously, it cannot compete directly with the, 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 the biggest or the highest performing CPUs or GPUs, which are well above 50 by 50 millimeters, um, but they have the capability of enhancing uh, a, a silicon die within reasonable um, uh, sizes of the package. Now, what is exactly reasonable? It's somewhere about 20 by 20. We believe that's capable. Is it 30? Is it 35? Not sure yet. That will be dealt with on a case-by-case -case basis. But in, in, even in the server or computing or networking area, uh, you can uh, think of certain uh, servers which don't necessarily need to be uh, with, with 100 cores, uh, but uh, less cores if you think about the uh, cloud computing, or they call it the, the, the fog servers. So somewhere in between the real main servers and your IoT devices, this is something that Fanout could penetrate in. Um, for the technology, so until today in high volume, we'll see, we saw die, die first mostly, right? Uh, so a lot of it coming from the EWLB and now, and now the info. Um, if you look at the future and you consider more multi-die packaging, it somehow makes intuitively more sense to use die last to control the yields. Um, however, now it's also a market question because the main manufacturers are, are, are die first. So at the end of the day, it will just be between, between yield and cost. Um, what, what we see is that it's much harder to develop uh, die first fan outs. The new players that try to enter with die first are not having so much success, whereas the ones that have been using die first for quite a long time have the yields uh, pretty high, so they will be likely also able to, pro to provide SAPs as a multi-die packages in, um, in high yields with uh, die first. For the rest, it's looking like die last. Um, a bit more info on the panel. So um, panel is a very exciting topic, but maybe my first question would be, 
what kind of fan out panel, right? Where you have companies developing panel for just to lower the, the, the price, to have higher volumes, um, to, to, to just be able to spread fan out um, in the applications that exist today. And then we have companies which are developing the high end panel, perhaps going to 5x5 five five and 3x3, three 3x3 by three, um, three by three microns. Uh, so fan out, um, especially this high end, it will take quite some time to still develop it. And uh, uh, I think that the fan out panel on the lower end side is really more linked to, um, to the Internet of Things. So when the IoT grows, when we really need this type of uh, SIPs uh, uh, and the, the sensors and all the connectivity, so perhaps in two or three years, we might see a real transition to, to fan out panel as well. Um, for the embedded die in panel, there was a question, uh, and, and how does it uh, relate to fan out panel, right? So do we see an explosion of embedded die in panel or fan out in panel? Well, I think it competes in two different markets, right? So embedded die is a, a highly reliable package. Um, it, it's, it's more robust, let's say, than the other advanced packages, and that's why it attracts interest more from the power domain, the automotive domain, or transport in general. So embedded die in substrate is maybe, in terms of market, a step behind fan out. However, um, as we've seen with DSC info and a, and a huge adoption of, uh, of fan out uh, almost overnight, so to speak, if one of the automotive manufacturers decides to adopt embedded die in substrate, then we'll see a huge spike um, uh, also in embedded dye substrate. So it kind of really depends on, on the biggest players. As far as we know, they're currently evaluating the embedded dye substrate for various applications uh, in the car. And if they, you know, if they uh, pull the trigger, then it's going to be a huge spike. Otherwise, we see a more gradual increase of embedded dye panel. Okay, that's it from my side. Okay, thank you. I think we are running off time, but uh, maybe we, we can try uh, another question for, for, for you, uh, Romain, maybe uh, one minute or two. Uh, in which application SIP will be most used? Romain, can you, can you do that in, in two or one in two minutes? Yeah, yeah, very, very, very quickly. Uh, it's an uh, it's, uh, interesting question, but... Uh, very difficult for for me to answer. Uh, what we can observe right now is that there is more and more SIP uh, in terms of application. It's uh, mainly linked to consumer application right now, uh, but we observe that um, a lot of products coming from uh, audio automotive and also industrial application which are using this kind of uh, of new platform. And uh, for sure, uh, we, we assume that at the beginning the consumer uh, will drive the market, but uh, uh, automotive, industrial, and uh, uh, other application like medical is also uh, really uh, well fitted for this kind of uh, platform also IP uh, from my ex my experience what we can observe is that a uh, uh, lot of application in fact will uh, will use this platform okay okay thank you thank you very much Romain uh, so the webcast is ending thank you all of you for listening uh, to the full webcast i hope you enjoyed it uh, as Earl said, uh, you will receive an email that will include the recorded session. So please feel free to, to share the presentation with your colleagues that can benefit from the information that has been presented. You can find all our uh, analyses and reports on our website, uh, as you may know, I micronews.com. Okay, so thank you again to join us. Do not hesitate if you have other questions. Um, and uh, please use the contacts that are available from the last slide of the presentation. So have a good day and thank you very much.